This is Kat with Beataholly, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make fringe earrings using Miyuki bugle beads. Now, today I have two beautiful colors of these twisted Miyuki bugle beads, and these are going to be really lovely. You can see the finished design over here is what we're going to be creating. I'm also going to be using some 110 Miyuki rounds for this as well. Now today we're going to be using some Nymo thread, which is this here in this beautiful gold color because I want to hide it against my gold findings. So I have this triangle frame, I have my jump ring, and I have a little post earring. Now you can choose whichever back you like for that post earring. Uh, you can do a bullet back or whatever you know fits your style. Now I am going to be using a size 12 beading needle. And then I also have some tulip snips here. You can use any type of scissor that you want. It's just gonna help us out with our thread. And then I have two pairs of chain nose pliers, one regular and one bent, and that's gonna help me with my little jump ring a little bit later here today. And then I also have a ruler. So if you have everything ready to go, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring in that ruler and I'm gonna take my thread. And to complete this design, I wanna work with about 12, excuse me, about six feet of thread. So I'm just gonna measure out one, two, three, four, five, and six. And a little extra, can't hurt. All right, and I'm just gonna cut that off of my spool there. Now, you're seeing that this is a little kind of tight and it's wire, or excuse me, and it's uh, coils. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of stretch it and just kind of run it through your hands here. And you can already see how much more it relaxes. And this is just gonna help our fringe just lay that much smoother. Now the good thing is, is that these bugle beads are nice and heavy. So they're already gonna kind of lay a little flat for us, but we just wanna help them out as much as we can. So you can see how coiled this is and how straight my other thread is here. So just a little tug, nothing too intense. All right, there we go. So to get started here, what we're gonna do, let me come to one end of my thread. I'm gonna take our frame, I'm gonna thread my needle there we go, and just pull that through. All right, so now we can come to the end without the needle here. I'm just gonna kind of draw this through my fingers. And we're gonna take our frame and we're just gonna tie a little overhand knot to one side here. Now we do wanna make sure that we leave a little bit of a nice long tail there because we're gonna tie that off at the very end. So just a nice little knot there. And for extra security, let's just do that one more time. All right, so we want our knot to sit on the bottom there. So the idea of using the gold thread is that we're not gonna be able to see it on our frame. So now we can take our tail and kind of get that out of the way. We'll use that at the very, very end. So now go ahead and pick up your needle and then you're gonna pick up four Miyuki beads here, four of those little round seed beads. And we're gonna slide that all the way down to the bottom. And what we're gonna do here is in essence a double row of brick stitch, but we're gonna do this all in one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold over and kind of make it look like we're gonna do a little loop there, bring our needle through the center, and we're gonna go back up through only the last two beads. And go ahead and pull that all the way through. And you'll see that it's gonna sit right on top there. And we wanna get it to sit next to those two little beads. So now we have our little kind of unit of four. So now we're only gonna pick up two seed beads. So what we're doing is we're making our row of brick stitch, but we're treating two seed beads as one. So again, let that come all the way down here. And I like to kind of just make sure that it's good tension and then kind of fold it over just like that. Bring the needle through the center and up through those little beads there. And we're gonna do this until we have 12 
sort of columns, we'll call them. So we want 12 columns of the two seed beads. So keep repeating this and I will meet you on the other side and we'll start adding on that fringe. All right, so we have our 12 columns of our brick stitch there of two beads each. So I'm coming out of this top one here. Now in order to get the fringe to do the chevron, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of a different technique. So each fringe is actually going to be in between each of the two seed beads. So let's start with the very first one here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up one of our Miyuki round seed beads. I'm gonna put that down for a moment. One of the seed beads, and then to get the pattern, I'm gonna add one bronze, one seed bead, one green, one seed bead, one bronze, and one seed bead. So now I'm gonna let that come all the way down here to the bottom. And this is going to be my first piece of fringe. Now I'm gonna turn my thread back around, leave that seed bead out, but go all the way through all the beads that I just strung there. There we go, up through that one, through the bugle, and then even up through this little one here. But normally, if you're just creating a straight parallel fringe, you would go up back into the bead that your thread is coming out of. But we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're actually going to go into the bead that it's next to because we wanna create a little triangle fringe that's gonna come into the center there. So as we sort of pull that together, we wanna make sure that we are nice and even. Sometimes you just gotta wiggle it around a little bit. There we go. So now you can see, let me just sort of situate that there, that it's sort of sitting in between those two little beads. Now, because of the way our thread's coming out, we're gonna do another little trick here. So we're gonna go down into that next bead that's right there and come out the top of that little third seed bead in that row of brick stitch. So you see where I'm coming out there? And you see obviously it gets nice and tight there so we wanna focus our tension. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the second row of fringe. So to do that, we're gonna do the same but we're gonna do two seed beads in between each of the pieces of the pattern. So pick up two seed beads, one bronze bugle, two seed beads, one green bugle, two seed beads, one bronze bugle, and we're gonna end with two seed beads. And go ahead and slide all that down to the bottom there. And now we're gonna turn it around and we're gonna go through all but that last little seed bead, so you can kind of knock that out of the way. But we do wanna go through that second one that's down there at the bottom, making sure we hit all the beads. And as the fringes get longer, you'll probably have to do two little passes like you'll see me do here. And again, coming all the way up, all the way through the last two seed beads there, but don't go into that row of brick stitch just yet. All right, so now I'm just gonna pull this all through, making it nice and even. And I encourage you to go slow here so you don't kind of snag your thread on anything. Okay. So now, let me pick this up here. So each, I want you to think of each of these rows as sharing. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go back through the second seed bead in the row because we're coming out of the third one. So we need to pull this over to this side just like that. So we're gonna go through the second bead now in our row and pull, 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 pull. And making sure it doesn't catch anything, take your time. And you see it kind of scooch right over there. Do you see that? So now we can come back down and go through this third bead because now the third bead and the fourth bead are gonna share the next row of fringe. So again, just kind of pull that together. And to keep the fringe going, 
we're gonna pick up three seed beads between each one. So three, one of the bronze, three, one of the green, three, one of the bronze, and three more seed beads. So the idea is that we want to, like I said, each of those rows is going to share one of these strands of fringe. And just take your time. It's the best way to not get tangles or to make sure that you're kind of going in the right way here. And all the way back up through those three. But again, remi remembering not to go through the brick stitch just yet. There we go. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so now, because we're coming out of the third one, we can go down into the fourth one. So you see how this is starting to develop? So again, we want to keep good tension, not too tight though. So now we're coming out of the fourth one and we're going to go into this fifth one here. So you're seeing this is kind of like a little bit of a loop-de-loo type of a pattern here to get those beads to sit in the center. So I'm going to do this one more with you and then I'm going to show you on the other side what it looks like, but it's in essence the same type of pattern here. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, a bronze, four, a green, four and a bronze, and last four seed beads here on the end of the row or the end of the fringe rather, I guess. And slide that all the way down to the bottom, leaving out our one little seed bead there and going back up through each of them. Now, like I said, as this gets longer, you can kind of do these little multiple passes here because we want to make sure that we hit each of those beads. We don't want to drop a bead or have anything kind of fall out of place there. And then and then one, two, three, four. Again, not going through the brick stitch. So let's get all that all that thread through. I like to keep my my work sometimes on the table. It just sort of helps me a little bit just kind of visualize um, and just see it all come together. If it helps you to pick it up in your hands, please do that. Again, this is a little bit of an advanced technique, so just take your time with it. Okay, so now we're gonna pick it up. So I'm coming out of that fifth bead, but I need to, again, kind of scooch this over. So it's the same as what we did before. So we're gonna go down through that fourth bead there. And now we can come back up through the fifth bead and we're ready to add the next row. Now you can see that I'm adding one extra seed bead for each of the fringes here. So if I can draw your attention up here to this guy, I'll kind of walk you through the rest of it because it's about the same. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the six is our center. And then we have five, four, three, two, one. And you can see that each of these beads kind of shares they have their own little triangle at the top there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna complete this other earring and then I will show you how to tie it off and finish it by adding on that jump ring. All right, so I just finished adding that last fringe. So now we're gonna go back up through both of these beads and I'm gonna to come towards the back here and pull that all the way through. 
and now I'm going to kind of flip it over. So I'm working on the back here because we have our tail. And now that it's on this side, we're all ready to just do a little quick overhand knot there. And it'll be hidden right on the back, just like so. And we want to then take our needle and just go back down through just like one little fringe there and we can kind of come out on that one side. So I'm just going through one of the bugle beads there. And you see that knot kind of just goes and it just hides right in there. So we can come in with our scissors and snip this side off. And you see how I have a little extra thread, but not much. So a little more than six feet is really what you want because we leave a nice tail here as well. But let's go ahead and hide this one. So I'm just gonna thread my little needle onto this side here. There we go. And I'm just gonna go down through the beads that are next to it in that next little row there. And just kinda just push them through. And then I can just cut that off because we've already tied that knot. It's just to hide that thread just a little bit. All right, so now we can flip this over. And what I love about this design, and this is why we kind of do it this way, is because the bugle beads have a lot of little movement to them, it's just because they're twisted, but they also kind of have that natural flare out. So all we're doing is really leaning into that. So that's why sort of the offset fringe in this design. So now let's take our chain nose pliers and our bent chain nose pliers, and we're gonna come to our little jump ring here and give that a nice little twist to open it up. Slide it onto the top of our finding and we're gonna slide on our little earring post there and just close that up. And like I said, you can choose your favorite style of earring back. You could also adjust this design. If you didn't wanna do a post, you could do an earring hook as well. All right, so that is the bugle bead fringe earrings. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can get all of these supplies and see even more tutorial videos by heading over to beadaholic.com. And if you're new to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Beadaholic.